The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, we've got options expiration, but most of the action pretty much happened yesterday. Um, but still pretty decent volume. They did push the market down a little bit in the morning. That may have been continued selling to raise cash for the two IPOs, the big ones that came out today. Uh, we've got Pinterest and Zoom. Um, they did a little bit better job of getting these out the door than they did uh, Lyft uh, a week ago. But at the same time, it took two and a half, well, we took two and a half billion dollars out of the out of somewhere and put it into new paper today. Actually, we had to have the cash in for last night, plus whatever anybody bought today. Uh, but they did a little bit better job. Now, again, this doesn't mean that the stocks are worth that. What they did was they printed up a whole bunch of shares. And what did they do? They only pushed some of the shares out. Uh, of uh, the $10 billion market cap for Pinterest, I think it's about uh, what, one and a half billion. So uh, I call these, uh, they're in the industry, they're called sliver deals. They put out just a little sliver of them. And probably the most egregious of all time that I remember has been Caesar's Palace. Uh, they put out 2% of the shares. And for the last, whatever, however long it's been out there public, uh, they've been doling out a few more shares every year. They just, as soon as it goes up a little bit, they dump out more shares. They dump out more shares. Now, the reason for shares are not to make you rich. It is to finance a company. And by hook or crook, the people of Wall Street get involved in getting that out the door. It is in their nature, and um, for the most part, uh, to support those companies because they get shares. Uh, not only a front up fee, but they get shares and they'd love those shares that they get basically free. They could go to zero or they could go to the moon before they could sell them. And if everything looks right, they'll get behind it. They'll flog it for all it's worth. They'll get it up there and then sell the shares off later. Sometimes they want to hang on to the shares for a long time. But I'd say, let's say seven out of 10 times uh, it's about getting the stock price up good enough that as soon as the lockup is over, that they can start cashing in. And uh, they'll let their equity uh, buy side guys look at it later. But uh, if you're in the M&A part of it, it's only one thing. That's getting the shares out, getting the cash back in, and doing it yet all over again. So, quiet day, options expiration, three-day weekend. We've got just about everything going on. Of course, Monday and Tuesday when we come back, uh, we're going to have some more earnings. It's back right off of the bat on Monday. Uh, and that is against the a backdrop of uh, a rollover Monday and Tuesday on options for the next month and the month after that, taking us into really almost summer. Um, to, 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 let's see on the calendar here. So on Monday, Halliburton, Steel Dynamics, um, Granger, not a whole lot. It's the after the bell action that starts uh, whirling up with Whirlpool after the bell on Monday. Tuesday, when we come back in the morning, uh, hopefully you're all rested because we've got Twitter, Verizon, Lockheed, Mark Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Arlie Davidson. UTX, uh, JetBlue, uh, ATI, Hasbro. Man, got a lot of them. Pulte Homes, Polaris Industries, uh, EDU, which is the uh, new Oriental Education, a, a pay-to-play school. 
Well, I guess aren't they all? And of course, uh, after the bell on Tuesday, Snap, eBay, iRobot, Texas Instruments, Ameritrade, Six Flags, Edwards Life Sciences, uh, Canadian Pacific Railway, Stryker, Teradyne, Hawaiian Holdings, uh, get you pretty much into Wednesday morning. And when we look at Boeing, Caterpillar, AT&T, Domino's, Pizza, Biogen. So that's going to have some action on Wednesday morning uh, for the biotechs, which, uh, again, I went on a rant. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't keep these days straight anymore. I think it was the day before. I think it was on Monday uh, when I railed against uh, uh, the Soviets uh, for uh, wanting uh, Soviet-style health care here in America. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, we get to that Wednesday after the bell with Facebook, Microsoft, Tesla, PayPal, Visa, Chipotle. Chipotle, Chipotle, who cares? I don't go there and I don't eat there. And the people that do, it's kind of Russian roulette eating, isn't it? You just don't know if you're going to die or not. Maybe it's one in a what, one in a hundred thousand, one and a half a million, one in a million. And it's hard to tell. Anyway, a uh, Titanic, a very Titanic uh, form of indigestion at the least. So we've got that going on for us. So uh, I got an itchy ear. Hang on a second. Sometimes you just got to itch. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and Xilinx. So we've got a little bit of, of that, but it's not going to stop. We've got two or three weeks of uh, them hammering out earnings left and right. So it is going to be kind of tough. Itchy ear my eye. Yes. Nothing like uh, mixing or doubling up on your metaphors. Uh, we've got a little bit of history today, and then we'll get into some charts and uh, talk about what's going on in the rest of the market. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1983, the Osborne Computer Corporation officially announced the Osborne Executive Portable Computer, the follow-up to its extremely successful Osborne One. This is a computer that, according to lore, took down the company. Known as the Osborne Effect, the legend is that by leaking the announcement of this computer earlier in the year, dealers canceled all the orders for Osborne Ones, effectively destroying the company's cash flow and hindering operations going forward. This resulted in the cancellation of the company's IPO and eventually went bankrupt. Uh, a lot of that's true. Um, it was the early wild, wild west days of uh, the computer industry. And a lot of people that had cash in it didn't quite like the way that the uh, executive was running the thing. So they brought in some people that were supposed to be the adults. Those, that's the people that actually leaked the story. Uh, and they thought that it was going to be good to make sure that everybody knew the company was running well and no new products were coming out. Um, so I can't, can't really blame the executive sitting in the seat as much as many people that got shoved in there because everybody wanted something to be smooth. Hey, you don't get into the computer business because you want the mundane and the mediocre. It's either heaven or hell for you. 18, or excuse me, 1983, Osborne Computer and sealed its fate. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, got our first question of the day. It says, uh, do you think Microsoft going to uh, pull back to 98 or... Is it 117 now, the pullback point? I sold 108, made a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, if the market continues to have problems, I don't know why. Um, yeah, I, you know, you got a little bounce out here, but, um, you know, it since this uh, 120 level, it's not had any volume, and it's just kind of bounced up here. Uh, the question is, uh, and he says, yeah, I made a mistake. I don't know what you bought it for than what you sold it for. If you bought it for less than what you sold it for, I wouldn't say it's a mistake. If you take your money and then let it run and run and run until eventually it does open up $20 later, then was that a mistake? You know, you only have the information that you have uh, when, you, uh, when you make the trade. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. So, uh, first of all, I don't know where you bought it and where you sold it, but I don't know if you sold it for more than you bought it. It's not a mistake. You may have taken your money early. I, I always like uh, Mark Wilson's uh, discussion about uh, taking money and having more money left on the table uh, as the worst thing for a trader psycho psychologically. Um, but uh, you know, it is one of those things where uh, if you were perfect, that would be fine. But uh, as uh, Confucius said, better a diamond with a flaw than a, a pebble in the shoe. And uh, most people, yeah, they just, you know, striving for perfection uh, will, uh, you know, will kind of kill you as a trader. If you think you're ever going to get everything uh, all the time in every trade. But, you know, could the thing... Gap down 10 bucks on earnings? Yeah. Um, I suspect that it is going to get back down around that 100 level. I don't know when. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least if you look at the whole market for the last two weeks, uh, a lot of things have just kind of gone up on no volume. And, you know, you get into April, you know, you're almost into May. Uh, we would have to have a trade deal and announce it fairly quickly. I just don't think it's coming anywhere or anytime uh, anywhere that quick. 
up five and a half points on the uh, S and P cash, up 134 on the Dow Nasdaq, basically flat up, or maybe up one point. Russell down one point. Um, so no signal out here that dips below it, but that's it. Uh, okay, so you had a good trade. Um, that's fine. There's a lot of stocks, and uh, you know what? This is a game that's more like baseball. You hit 60, or you win 60% of your games. Um, you know, you're in the World Series. You get, uh, you hit 400, and you make 35 miles, 35 million a year. Um, you know, you just want to, you know, when you do hit that home run, you want to circle the bases. Make sure you touch every one of them. I don't know. It's not interesting. I didn't, the market's been acting rather horribly for a while, and it does seem rather hugely extended. Um, I hadn't seen a lot of reasons to be long uh, and uh, hadn't seen many stocks uh, give up the ghost and say it was time to be short yet. But uh, certainly we're going into a three-day weekend. I'm fairly bearish coming into next week. And uh, there may be several reasons uh, beyond uh, this, the technical, that I think that is true. But um, the ability for uh, the market not to be able to swallow $2.5 billion worth of IPOs this week and not run up to the highs, I think, is somewhat telling. But again, I think we're, you know, the risk reward is fairly decent. Either we're probably going to bounce on Monday and everybody's going to come back in like nothing ever happened, or uh, we're going to start sell continue selling off, in which I see a lot of stocks uh, that are starting to droop over on that right shoulder of the uh, stocks. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Usually we do the Tech Insider segment on Friday. Of course, we will not be here then. If you have anything that maybe is a little off the beaten path, you can call me today on technology. Um, I was looking at one that I thought was pretty funny because I was in the uh, I was in the uh, a store last Sunday, and the 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 guy that was working there was nobody around. It was a nice day down here in Florida, and I think one of the first really nice, beautiful days, and everybody was out doing stuff. Last thing they wanted to do was be in the store. I had to run there and pick some stuff up. Anyway, this guy was trying to watch uh, the golf game on his phone. They had a Roku hooked up to the television, and he was sitting there cussing the Roku because he spent money on CBS All Access. And he goes, uh, what do you think All Access means? And I said, uh, well, you get to access everything. He goes, no. Guess what? CBS All Access doesn't include the golf games they broadcast. So he was kind of mad at either buying, at both buying his Roku and CBS All Access, said he was canceling it on Monday. I think that's the problem. They kind of uh, uh, bifurcated and chopped up and misled a lot of people on stuff. But you know what? The chart doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be at this point. Of course, this is another one of those stocks that has a mountain of short sellers in it. I've actually thought many times that it is going to be the next GoPro. And it may be, maybe uh, the thing is that it uh, is probably a little harder uh, to fault the CEO about it. Uh, one of the things I, oh, I wouldn't be short, it's got 14 days to cover. So if you're looking at the stock inner day next week and we do get a little pop, watch for this thing. It looks good on the chart. I don't like the business so much, and we're coming into earnings. But one thing I do like is 14 days to cover means that you may be able to run these shorts uh, into bankruptcy if they're on the right, wrong side of anything happening. And, of course, it's probably going to be some article about uh, – them getting bought out by somebody at a hundred bucks and it'll probably all be fabricated, but it won't matter because uh, there'll be a lot of people looking out there for uh, cream and uh, uh, ointments and lotions 
for their backside if they were short Roku with 14 days to cover. So, and in fact, I didn't look and see what it was like. Uh, oh, that was GoPro. Let me put uh, Roku in here because it's always like that. Eh, it's not, oh, I'm sorry about that. I gave GoPro 14 days to cover. Uh, Roku, not so much. Wow, did I make a big mistake there? I'm glad I, I looked back and updated it. Eh, not as bad as one would think. Maybe this is why it is headed down. Well, I'm glad I caught it right then. GoPro, 14 days to cover. Roku, one day to cover. Wow, big mistake there. Be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we're back, again, not much uh, movement and volume kind of tipping over, but 4.2 billion shares already on the CBOE uh, equities market volume summary. Um, there's going to be a new version of the art of timing the trade charts on Monday for those subscribers that have it. Um, look for some emails and links to download the new version. I've been working on this for a few months. Uh, one of the things a lot of people had asked about uh, was going to that CBOE market volume summary uh, numbers. 
And uh, now, uh, whether you go to the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or any of the other ones, uh, it will re uh, real-time update and the history uh, will show the CBOE volumes for all of the various markets. So uh, one important upgrade. So you'll be able to see all those. Um, it's been somewhat difficult to find data providers uh, that don't want an arm and a limb. I'm talking about three, eight, three, ten grand a month or something to supply data in the format that you're actually looking for. So it ends up being uh, somewhat problematic. But um, you know what? Um, not a bad thing to look at. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, the New York Stock Exchange. Anyway, all of these will have the uh, volumes all set up. So no biggie there. Um, but uh, just keep an eye on it. And again, we've it's been very subtle. But, you know, we've just had this kind of, on average, volume ticking down, volume ticking down. Uh, but we've now got uh, where the selling volume is just a little bit more than the buying volume on average over the last two or three weeks. So this may be one of the most subtle tops coming in or the pause where we get ready to go and try to take out the all-time highs. Um, normally, I would say it was a uh, given that we'd go test the all-time highs next week. Uh, and maybe we get the news to actually do it. But the response this week has been horrible on a lot of stocks from looking at Goldman Sachs um, and uh, them holding it up uh, pre-market only to sell it off. Now, yesterday, they pumped it right back up. But the reaction and the guidance is not all that good. And a lot of that has to do with the pumping today has to do with options expiration. So as I'm saying, you know, today we're up on a little less than 2 million shares. You really wanted to see, you know, a lot more out of these uh, than we got. Um, and I was going to say even the earnings from yesterday, when you looked at them, I think we had one or two outside the outlier of up or down 4%. Uh, on earnings announcements. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just been become kind of brutal out here that uh, the reaction is going to be muted both up and down until it starts trading, in which case we actually see a lot of these stocks do a little bit more. Uh, we were talking about Best Buy, and I've got an email asking me whether or not I would short it for the trip back down to about 70 or about 62, maybe 62.50. And I think it's probably going to be for sale with the new CEO coming in and the old CEO leaving. Um, its volume has not been good since we really had the gap up on the earnings of February 27th. Uh, not a huge winner, uh, but again, it's looking like a lot of these stocks that rolled over. And that is a lot of a sideways action at the highs. You know what it is? My ear was itching. And then, um, you know, my eyes are kind of itching. I think I've got some issues here with allergies. Now i got to sneeze. Maybe it's that air conditioning kicking out um, all the bad allergens of the last month because I, I really haven't had it on this week. But uh, I'll turn it down a little bit so I can hear what's going on. In the earwig, yeah, could be that. Anyway, give me a call today at 877-927-6648. We'll start looking at some of these other stocks that we looked at earlier this week and see how they developed after the uh, – very, very light volume that we talked about earlier in the week. Let's go back to the 15th. Uh, Autodesk has kind of rolled over. Uh, we saw it try to blow away the previous high that had 4 million shares uh, back on March 1st. You got into it. You never really had any kind of juice. Yesterday, it rolled right back into the trading range. Got a little bit of a hammer today, but certainly these things, there's not a lot of juice 
when these things go to the highs and uh, they're not found there. One of the ones I wanted to look at for a possible long was Baby. Um, we traded this and I think I bought it at 25.50 or something and sold it at 25 bucks. It just never went higher over about three or four days than I had it, when it should have probably taken back off. The energy on this right-hand side is nothing. But again, it's below its previous low of February 13th. Had 3 million shares yesterday. You just had 342,000 shares. So there is the possibility that some of these will bounce back in to their trading range. Again, a lot of earnings coming up. And Caterpillar, one of those. 9.4 million shares on December 3rd. Uh, yesterday, we were into that with 3.5 million shares today. Uh, probably going to do very close to the same. So that would be um, kind of it. Um, to, to, to CBLK, which is carbon black, uh, one of these stocks in the uh, security software part, actually doing fairly well on light volume going into the February 22nd low at uh, 12 bucks that had 4 million shares. And you're into it with 284,000 shares today. So some of these things do look like they could be bottoming out. Uh, of course, um, Hack kind of gave a big signal out here the last few days. This is the security shares, factor shares, uh, security ETF. Got to 4140, rolled down hard yesterday, 241,000 shares today. Uh, making a little bit more of a hammer out here on 200,000 shares, but certainly went to its new highs and rolled over fairly quickly. Uh, what do we have? Uh, Sears Logic, another one that broke above its highs. Uh, and of course, you had some juice going into that high on the 16th. You spiked a giant doji yesterday. You're still going a little bit sideways out there today. Another one that's on the lows that looks like it could be a possible buy just on a price and volume and chart basis is this uh, Fossil. Um, and again, it's one of those stocks that's got major shorts always on it. Oh, F-O-S-L. Get it here. And it hadn't been too bad lately. 15 days to cover on it, too. So there's another one. So we got a couple of stocks, GoPro 15 days to cover, Fossil 15 days to cover. If I'm wrong about us going down, probably ought to look at some of these stocks and see how fast they can run on some good news. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're looking at a few more stocks. Got plenty of time here for you to give me a call, especially if you have some kind of question, maybe a technical question. We don't normally talk about during the week because there's lots of action. Eh, give me a ring. Um, we were talking about these healthcare stocks and uh, Intuitive Surgical, of course, coming up on earnings next week. But it didn't matter. Uh, no one wanted any part of it. It did give fairly bearish sign uh, up here on April 12th at 589.32. Uh, it uh, was testing a 750,000 share high with 460,000 shares. So this is where I'm talking about brittle markets. And that is that if you got no volume, a lot of times you don't want to be short. But at the same time, if you don't have a, the risk reward set up correctly, you don't want to be long either. And you know, I, why there are a handful of stocks that have a lot of short sellers in it. If you're in one that doesn't have any short sellers in it, there's nobody to buy it on the way down. And that's kind of what we're looking at in Intu Intuitive Surgical and some of the other stocks. Um, that without anybody there, there's kind of a big air pocket almost instantaneously uh, on selling that breaks through any of the standard uh, standard deviations in a stock. Um, so that is always something interesting. But, you know, this one went right back to where this thing took off at on February 11th at 520 bucks. Uh, but again, a fairly big air pocket. And uh, eh, what else can you say going into earnings? Uh, to, to 3M, we were looking at that. Uh, bouncing around its highs. Now it's holding up for Minnesota mining and machinery, is that what it is? Three M's, 5.56 uh, million share high on September 21st of last year. That was 216.51. Gets you into that today up and above it with 1 million shares. So again, uh, is it horrible? Well, it certainly is on the volume today. Certainly is the volume the last handful of days. Generally, you don't like that in a stock. Uh, what else do we have? Match Group. Looking at this one. Um, now, this one is another one that kind of took a beating. Uh, I don't think mostly because what they're involved in, uh, that they'll be around in 10 years. The question is, when does uh, something come out that really destroys what these guys do, their grinder and, and uh, all the other kind of apps as people call them, hookup apps. I'm just assuming that one day that there'll be yet another disease out there that'll keep everybody from um, doing what they are doing on those things. But at the same time, how do you make money? And, you know, is it a squeaky clean business with no problems? Or is it a problem, you know, that we know in these kind of dating apps that have always ended up being uh, sensationalized uh, Hollywood movies after a while. Uh, that was be, you know, kind of the uh, thorn in the paw of these businesses. 
But certainly when you have almost 10 million shares and all you can get is 3 million shares on April 16th, that's telling you that there aren't a lot more people willing to dive in to this one before we go. Uh, what else do we have? PPG. Again, if we open up lower and gap down, you want to watch a few of these stocks, especially today, uh, that did have, um, you know, decent pops. But if they start to, you know, if this thing gaps down on Monday, I would look very hard at the automotive industry and see what they're doing, too. If they continue to do that, PPG makes a lot of paint and windshields and other things for cars. I think that's telling you a lot about the auto industry if this thing does gap down. Skyworks Solutions, uh, as we talked about this, it went into the $90 high of November 1st of 2018. That had 1.85 million shares. Last couple of days, you had 2 million shares and you had 3 million shares, and it still couldn't hold that high and rotate back down inside. Uh, things actually probably look a little bit better for the cell phone business than they did in past weeks. But again, there's just, it doesn't matter if the market turns against you. If people won't buy higher highs, if the volume goes away, yeah, can they go a little higher? But you're always waiting for that snap that we saw in intuitive surgical last couple of days, because that's how they will crack. I'm not doing that. I uh, got an email uh, about what I'm watching these days. Uh, Bosch season five this weekend uh, is new on Amazon Prime. I got rid of uh, Netflix because it just seemed like nothing on there that I wanted to watch. Um, trying to think anything else. I'm kind of I'm watching The Rookie on ABC, and it may be because I met the guy, that, the actor that's the star of that movie, early on when he was doing Firefly in, what, 2000 or 2001? Uh, so I know him, so maybe, and he was nice and wasn't like everybody else I've met out in Hollywood that was an actor, the pretty level-headed dude. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Uh, watch that. Trying to think if there's anything else. That's about it. So when I come back, I'm going to actually be wheels up at about 4 o'clock um, today. And we're going to be uh, spending a few days doing some sailing down on Marathon Island in the Keys. Weather seems to be good. So I'll come back uh, hopefully worn out and exhausted, which is what vacations are supposed to be, aren't they? But that uh, should be good. Uh, anyway, we'll be on Monday talking about uh, the rollout of the latest edition of the Art of Timing the Trade charts and uh, got everything uh, fixed and ready to go. And that's it. We've got somebody else's. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I got some other people writing me here. But it doesn't have anything to do with the market or anything I want to talk about. Okay, let's look at a few more. VLO. Uh, the uh, numbers came out right before the show from the Baker Hughes numbers on rig count. Rig count was down. And, you know, we're basically at the last week where we should see rig counts down. From now on, we should only see production higher rig counts higher, uh, more gasoline as most of those refineries have now got uh, switched over from their uh, winter formulas to their summer formulas. So we should see nothing but huge production numbers from now on. And again, when we get into Wednesday, we start seeing uh, crude start to roll over. The XLE and a lot of these stocks that basically hit highs out here on light volume uh, should be very interesting to me as a possible short. Um, the XLE, look at that. I mean, it's done nothing but go sideways here for seven, eight, nine trading days. Down a little bit today. Anyway, we'll be back shortly. Wrap up the show.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, Jeff from New Jersey, do we have you on the line? Yes. Hi, David. How are you? Fantastic. So, uh, what are we uh, what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, uh, today's question is: I know we don't have much time. Um, I do a lot of testing of uh, setups to see if they're effective and worth uh, employing or not. And mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, I do all my testing manually, looking at charts on the screen and creating big spreadsheets and I'd like to automate that mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I wanted to ask your advice on um, what you'd recommend is the best platform to do a lot of testing the top two from a um, little bit of uh, research and conversations I've had is TradeStation and Thinkorswim Thinkorswim especially because they have that huge uh, database of history of uh, price movement of all kinds of things, options, everything, so that you can go back and sort of play a DVR, you know, and test. Yeah. Um, but but you're talking about there. all straight back testing, right? Yeah, back testing. Yeah. You know what back testing is called? Back testing? Well, it's, it's called curve fitting. One of the, well, one of the, thing, one of the things that you, you uh, want to do is you'll find patterns that really don't mean anything. And that's generally the problem with traditional back uh, checking. Um, did I email you last week? You did. About, uh, yeah, about uh, 
sample size. Rap, rapid minor? Um, well, I've been I, focused on the sample size calculation. I haven't looked yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. I, I sent you a that, link but... for rap. I sent you a link for rapid minor. I think yep. you'd be well, even if you're not going to use it, be well worth spending some time with that because you're going to look at how they split up data, right? So that you don't just do straight back testing, but you do forward testing too. And uh, well, why don't you call me Monday when we've got some more time? But. The okay. idea of just doing straight back testing is generally fraught with error. And we'll talk about that. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here Monday. Same bat channel. Thank you. Same bat time. Hang on.